Hey, I'm Rob Grimm. I want to take a few minutes today to show you how I shoot product using three color shadows in RGB. Now, it's a kind of an interesting technique in that you're washing together three colors of light to get three colored shadows, but you're actually mixing them so that you get white light mostly on the subject. Not completely, there's a lot of bleed and it, it's kind of an interesting effect, but it's a really eye-catching way to photograph something. Now, typically, it's a pain in the rear end to do, but it's become much easier to do with the advent of full color spectrum lights, uh, particularly the Forza 60 Cs that I've been using from Nanlite. Completely changed the game for me in the way I approach this type of product, and I wanna show you how I do that. So let's go into the studio here. Let me show you what we're shooting behind me and show you how this process works. So the old way of doing this wasn't exactly fun. I had to go into our gel drawer, pull out the colors we wanted. Then I had to take my reflector or my modifier, whatever I was gonna use, and I'd have to trace this out, and then I'd have to get scissors, and I'd have to cut this out. But, you know, I was always dealing with these things that were a mess. Like, look at this, this gel. It's all scratched up and gross. It's got old tape on it that's collecting dust and nastiness. I just hated this method. And then, you know, once you had to cut out, you'd have to tape it on, make sure it was all good. And even here, this is all just kind of cruddy. It doesn't seat perfectly well on that because I didn't do the best job. And then I'd put it on my light, and then I'd go out to my set, and I'd mount it. So now in doing it with the Forza 60Cs, all the gel, like all the color, it's internal, it's actually inside, but it's infinite. There's so many colors I can choose from, so many hues I can choose from. I'm not limited to this stuff in any way, shape, or form. To me, this technique works kind of with any subject matter, but clearly there's a difference in terms of scaling. If you're shooting a full body person, which is a lot larger than a pair of headphones, the entire scale is different. So it's easier in some ways, if you're doing people, to set your lights up and you can have them kind of spaced apart in order to control the shadows and where they're going. Now remember, as you're setting the different color lights, you're creating different color shadows on the background, but together they're kind of washing to create white light on the subject. So I'm basically using four lights here, and the way I've done that is to kind of put everything in a compact fashion. Because remember, I'm shooting something fairly small in this set of headphones. I put together just a simple C-arm that I've run on an angle, and I've put three lights on knuckles right on the same arm. And I'm doing them at a slight angle going down, right? But they're also angling slightly away from my subject and not pointed right at it. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanna change the position of the shadows. Again, I'm in pretty close to this subject, so I don't have a ton of flexibility in where I place these lights. But I've got flexibility in how I position them and what part of the reflector I'm using. So for example, this, this blue light, the main light, it's pretty much coming dead center on this. I have it tipped up a little bit in order to get that, that shadow a little bit longer. So it's kind of coming right in this area is the center focus of it. And then next I've got my red light, which I've got sweeping at just a little bit of an angle and I'm using more of the outer edge of the reflector. Now remember, you don't have to use a light dead on. You can actually feather it either left or right and you can kind of use a different portion of the reflector in order to have the light kind of sweep across, which is what I'm doing here. And then I've got my green light, which is also coming in at a little bit of a sharper angle and I'm using a little bit more of this side in order to get that greenish kind of yellow shadow coming across. And you can see how the colors are mixing. I really got red, green, blue, and yellow going out there, depending on where the light crosses. It's really pretty cool. And what's nice about having these lights on the knuckle is that I can slide them up or down. I can easily make adjustments and small ones. When I'm in on a subject this tight, the movements are gonna be pretty small. I don't want to necessarily have huge movements. So this particular setup, where they're kind of locked together, yet they have flexibility to move on that same axis, it really gives me the ability to fine tune things and I don't wind up with three different light stands all kind of butting into each other with their feet. That's one of the biggest reasons I did this. I'm eliminating as much in the studio as I possibly can. So the last light that I wanna put out here is just a bit of a kicker. My three lights are giving me the beautiful shadows that are coming across, but remember, those three lights together, the RGB, 
they are mixing to create white light, which means I'm also getting a gray shadow. The gray shadow I really don't love. To me, it's really kind of pulling away from the, the beautiful color shadows. So I've popped in this last light and I'm really having it do a couple of things. I'm shooting it more dead at the inner cup of the headphones because I want that to have some vibrancy and some life because all my lights were coming from that side. It was really kind of in shadow. And since I'm looking into it, I need to give that shape and volume. So this light is giving me that. Now, since it's pointed there, I'm getting a beautiful edge light on the outer edge. And that gray shadow is now picking up a little bit of blue and it's got tone in it. So it feels like it's tied together with the rest of the image versus kind of standing off. So again, I've got so much versatility with these lights. I can dial this to any amount of blue that I want. Tons of creative versatility. All right, let's get down here on the set and let me show you what I really have going on from the camera perspective all the way back to the lights. I started playing around with this idea when I had the Forza 60Bs, right? And this was a shot that I started to map out a while ago. This is just a printout of it. This was with the Bs and I was putting the gels on the lights. And when I first started putting the set together for you to do this little tutorial, I started back in this position where my camera was up much higher and I had the long shadows. The long shadows are really cool for the demonstration of this, but in all honesty, I didn't love the composition. So I did what I always do. And then as I moved from my starting place and I just started walking around my set, uh, got down really low, was shooting a bunch of different angles, and wound up in this position that I felt really had kind of the most dynamic perspective on the headphones while still giving me this cool shadow. And I didn't want to see just pure white of the set. I wanted to have a cool horizon line at an angle and going back in the distance. So I wound up right here. Now, I initially was a little bit lower, so when I brought my camera in, I flipped my low angle bracket and I went upside down on it so I could kind of hang this. I was really low. I didn't like that so much. I wound up just coming up a little bit. And now I'm looking basically right back into my lights, right? So all three of my main lights, my RGB lights, are coming not quite dead at camera, but dead enough where they're all glaring. So I put in this little tiny flag here coming on a C-arm to kick the light out of my lens so I'm not getting that flare. So it's a pretty simple set in terms of where I wound up. Now, yeah, sure, I even talked about moving this up higher so that I didn't have to bend down or I didn't have to sit on the floor in order to focus and do all that. But one thing I've learned over the years, when you start making changes, everything changes, and it can be so hard to get back to something that you really like. And I just say, forget it. I'm gonna force myself to work in this position. So sometimes that happens, and for me, it's okay. This is where I wound up, but this is the shot that I'm going for, so I'm happy with it. So again, Having flexibility is really nice, and with Nanlite, and using the Nanlink specifically, I've got the ability to easily go through and make changes with this. So I just wanna take a quick look at my lights here, and you know, I'm gonna make a couple quick changes. Make sure, yeah, everything is set where I want. So this is where I wound up for my final image. And I really love the quality of what's going on here. You can see now that light that I was talking about, that last kicker light, that fourth light, which is really bringing that light in here. Without it, it's really kind of dead. And it's also giving me this nice highlight. And you can see down here, the shadow is picking up a little blue. Now, for the sake of curiosity, let me kick that light off. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this again for you and you're gonna see a huge difference in what's going on. So when you look at that, you can see how that light is out. You can see the difference in these, in these two images. Now, this shadow does have a little bit of blue in it, but it's still pretty much kind of that gray that I don't want. And you can just see how it's really kind of dead in here. This shape is nice, but it's not quite where I want it. So by adding that light, it gives me a little bit of kick in there, but you can see what it really does up here to the shoulder and in here on this earpiece. Now, one of the things that I also like to do is actually go through and look at each light individually. I think that's an important thing to do, specifically when you're working on a set like this, where you've got different lights, where you're mixing the colors. It's not just that you're mixing value and power, you're mixing the colors as well. So let's go in and let's actually kick them out and let's start one at a time and let's see what the green is doing. And that's pretty cool. Now, for the sake of messing around in illustration, I'm gonna open up this green light 
and let's play with it. Like right now, I've got it set so it's at 50% and I'm at 126. But let's see what happens when I make a change. You can see that color changing, right? You see the, the variance in the hue and in the saturation? So I went from 126 to 230. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, really different. Like the vibrancy, you can see everything about that is totally different. It's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna go back to 126 and then let's go turn the green off and we're gonna do our red guy, which is next. I'm gonna pop that. And one of the things I wanna do here is I wanna look at exposure and color, right? I wanna make sure that I'm not completely underexposed with any one light. Now we're gonna to go to the blue. And that's really my main light. That's gotta have the most vibrancy for a couple reasons. One, it's my main light. Two, I'm playing off of the color of the actual headphones themselves, which are blue. So I really wanna kinda of push up that vibrancy. And we can see the difference now. I'll turn that last guy out and I'll turn my little kicker light in and you can see just how much that's doing which in many ways is gonna feel like it's barely doing anything when you look at it alone. Like, look how dark that image is. Yet, at the same time, you can see the highlight it's creating. You can see where it's filling in here a little bit, but in particular, it's giving me this light right here, that nice, strong light. So let's go ahead and turn them all back on. We'll get back to our baseline, and we can see just how cool that is. Yeah, all right, that's amazing. So now that we're here, do we wanna mess with this? Like. Let's go in and change colors. And you can see when you're looking in the app that I've got a little bit of red, a little bit of green, and then a good amount of blue. I've got 150. So let, let's go from 150, you know, let's pop it up to 212. Let's see what happens to that light. Let's see what kind of a difference we notice. Now again, I'm just totally experimenting here. We're just gonna play around. There's not a whole lot of difference in that, but if we want to really affect some change, and my red, let's really whack that guy out. Let's see how much that changes. So you can see how that, that has really changed. So now my main light is actually almost purple. Look at the difference in the hue. That is where I had pumped up the blue a little bit more in this frame, and then we go one more where I've changed the red from 126 to 244 on the slider and the Nanling cap, and bam, look at how much purple there is. It's not the craziest change in the world, but it's really precise, and that really gives me the ability to change things and kind of do things on the fly. It gives you creativity you could never have using gels. You just, you couldn't do this. It would take you all day long, and you just wouldn't have the versatility. This has got latitude, which is what I really like about it. All right. I hope you like this little video. It's just a great illustration of what you can do with this technique and particularly using full spectrum light, which is just so nice. For me, there's infinite creativity that can occur with these types of lights and I barely scratched the surface. I mean, clearly I could go on doing this for a while, but I just wanted to show you how quickly you can make these changes and how effective they can be. I really have fallen in love with these lights and they're really helping me to explore some new creative directions that I just wouldn't even begin to attempt going back to the old gel drawer and pulling those things out and doing a whole gaff tape in that bit. So I'm really having a great time with it. It's opening me up to some new creative avenues and I hope you find the same is true.